but we also have a real robust group of spoke airlines and international airlines that uh, that benefit the region. Our, our cargo business is growing. Uh, we have we have low cost relative to our competitive airports, um, and and as I mentioned, a large percentage of, of non airline revenue streams with a bunch of opportunity, namely uh, con terminal concessions. A lot of opportunity to grow that business. And finally, the new use agreement will uh, will hopefully better position us to grow all of these businesses, including concessions in the future. So that wraps up my presentation. Anybody have any have any questions? Thanks very much. Oh, yes, sir. Um, the, the question was of the, uh, uh, we mentioned that 60% uh, of our passengers are, uh, are connecting, and the question is do we have information on, on dwell time of those 60%? And, and we, we do, and, and we, can, we can pull together some of that information. I mean, one of the things that, that American did over the last five years is they got away from, uh, or, or they, they got sort of into this rolling bank concept, whereas before they may have six or seven banks during the day, as they call it. So, you, you know, over a one-hour period, it'd be very busy, and then it'd be, it'd be very quiet for the next however many um, uh, minutes or, or hours. What they did is they sort of s spread out their, their, um, their traffic to where it's more consistent. I mean, certainly they still have their banks, but during those downtimes, there's more activity there. So, yeah, we, we've got information on, on, the, on average dwell time. I, I don't have it handy, but we could certainly get it. Uh, yeah, we get it directly from American, yes. Sure. Thanks very much. Two winners. Let's see. Uh, Albert Bryant is the first winner. Terrific. I think it's a wad of cash. I, I can't tell. <laughs> sure. And then Thomas Brown. Terrific. I know that's not a wad of cash, but it looks good anyway. Sure thing. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, good afternoon. Um, I, like Jeff, uh, got asked to come speak to you and uh, appreciate the opportunity. I see a couple of faces in the audience that I recognize, so um, I'll probably be repeating some things y'all have heard me say before. Um, but I'm the Assistant Vice President of Customer Service and Terminal Management. Just kind of want to tell you a little bit what, about what we do. Uh, my, my entire staff is in the terminal, um, and we're really about the only DFW Airport board staff that's in the terminal, uh, except for a couple of exceptions there. Um, but basically, we have our, our terminal managers, which fall under the terminal management. Uh, we have terminal management representatives, ground transportation, and our wonderful ambassador program, which some of you folks might have run into them upstairs this morning or this afternoon. Uh, but basically, we're the liaison between the tenant airlines, the concessionaires, the contractors, media, and all board departments on just about any subject. Um, we oversee the physical, operational, and aesthetic conditions um, of terminal facilities and surrounding areas as part of the board's ongoing program to improve the overall guest and tenant relations. We maintain regular communications with airline station management, concession tenants, and key departmental personnel to ensure terminal areas are maintained in compliance with conditions set forth in the use and lease agreements and other applicable documents. We do have a lot of um, things about temporary signage and uh, just things to make things look better. Uh, we coordinate last minute and after hour tasks and assignments for all board departments and sometimes the air carriers. Uh, we supervise t uh, the terminal management representatives and ground transportation curbside sections and we ensure customers are kept at, at the uh, highest priority by all projects and all uh, entities. Um, our terminal management representatives, uh, they're, they're housed in a, a tower in Terminal D. Um, they manage all the board-owned gates. Uh, and right now we have 22. Uh, there's some in Terminal E and some in Terminal D. We do have one in Terminal B, but that's mainly for our military flights. So it's pretty easy to, to, to uh, operate that one. Uh, and then our ground transportation curbside, we operate all the taxi uh, cab stands out, out front. Um, we patrol the upper and lower level curbside, uh, write tickets for unattended vehicles, uh, anybody that violates the one hour, two hour parking. 
And then we also have a uh, courtesy patrol fleet that goes around and helps customers with jump starts, flat tires, things like that. So pretty diverse group of folks. And then our ambassador program, uh, 604 volunteers uh, to date. I think they've actually gained a few more. And if Karen was here, she'd give me the exact number. But I, I want to say it's around 630. Um, but they service all the terminals and the rental car center. Uh, they're, they're just wonderful folks. They donate about four hours a week. Uh, and then there's a team of supervisors that kind of help them get into the right places. Uh, it is a 24-7 operation. Uh, and as a group, they speak 38 different languages. And they serve approximately 1.5 million guests per year. We also just started an art docent program in Terminal D where the ambassadors are actually taking folks through on the art tour in the terminal. Um, and uh, then they also have been helping us in the customs and board protection area. If you've ever flown in internationally, sometimes those lines get a little overwhelming. Uh, people get in the wrong line, so they kind of help verify documents, make sure people are in the right lines up there. That's kind of a new program in the last couple of years. Um, some of the projects to enhance the experience of our guests we've been working on uh, this year with, in conjunction with the concessionaire team and uh, uh, our real estate department and just about every department out here. Um, we, we created a This Is My Airport video, and that's going to actually be the last thing I show you. Uh, it's about a three and a half minute video, so it's pretty quick. Uh, but we show that to all incoming em employees so they get a chance to see what we're all about. Um, Samsung power poles and travel lounges. I'll show you some pictures of those in a moment. Uh, we just replaced uh, seating in all the terminals. It was about a $10 million project. The seats that were existing in the older terminals had been there uh, since the last use agreement, I think, was written. So. Um, we also started adding comfort zones, and uh, there's a picture of one at B28. Just a little bit more comfortable seating, some different colors, some plants, some things to really liven the area up and, and make it more comfortable for folks. Uh, the terminal development program, which most of you are here for that reason today. Um, the restroom renovation project uh, is a $45 million project. And I've got some pictures kind of showing before and after in just a second. And then our global entry uh, is an uh, international program we put in place to help our international frequent flyers come through customs faster. Uh, they won't have to stop and talk to an officer. Uh, they basically just put their uh, passport in the machine, retina scan, and off they go. So it's a really great feature. Again, uh, just some of the, the things, uh, the comfort zones, there's some different pictures. Every one of them is a little bit different. Um, and we're, we're adding to them and changing them up as we go. This is a Terminal E concept. We've got everything in place except the wood floor, but it's something we're looking at for the TDP. Uh, is that possible to add some wood flooring in some of these areas to, to warm it up a little bit? Um, this is the uh, Samsung power poles. You can kind of see uh, in Terminal D, these large poles, people know they can uh, plug in and have plenty of power. Uh, we've installed those, up about 16 per terminal. Um, and, and they can host up to, I think, 24 plugs at each one of them. So they're really nice. And then the uh, far picture there is our Samsung Theater. We've got two of those in Terminal D. Um, really nice place to get away. Uh, you can watch different channels. It's not stuck on CNN. So you can get ESPN up there, the Cartoon Network. And you plug your own headsets in and listen to it. So it's, it's kind of a neat, neat idea. and People love it. These are some of the older restrooms over in Terminal E. The one on the left, obviously, is uh, the, the older one, and the one on the right there, the one that uh, we just, just got it remodeled and opened. Uh, huge difference uh, in the look. And then this is uh, our global entry program, uh, like I told about. Uh, we're, we're actually working with companies right now to, to set this up as a mobile registration. So once a company gets 20 or 30 people that want to sign up for this program, uh, we've got uh, Customs and Border Protection agreed to go out and actually do the interviews at the company's site. Uh, they do have to do about a 15-minute interview with a person before they're allowed to use this, this process. Um, but our marketing department came up with this, this great ad. And um, to date, I think we've got somewhere around 1,500 people already signed up for the program. And our goal is 5,000. So we're, we're, we're out there hitting the streets right now. Before I start the video, um, are there any questions about kind of like what our customer service terminal management department does? Yes, sir. Um, how many people do the comfort zones uh, typically accommodate? They're, uh, they're, they're different in size, and, and actually the furniture is different in each one. Uh, the one at D24 holds about 55. Uh, the one at B28 is a little smaller. It's only going to accommodate about 12 to 15. Um, and then the one over at 
terminal E is quite large. It's, it's going to hold about 40. Um, so we're, we're trying to test it out right now and kind of see customers' responses. So when we go forward with the TDP, we will definitely be putting these in. It may be a lot more often than it is now. Um, they could be smaller, but almost every other gate, or they could be larger and maybe every four or five gates. So we're kind of doing some surveys right now to test the water. Anything else? Okay, well, I'll start this video, and uh, as soon as we do that, we'll uh, give away our next two prizes. Hi, my name is Joe Lopano, Executive Vice President of Marketing and Terminal Management for the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. I want to just take a few minutes to welcome you to the DFW Airport team and tell you why it's so